And thank you for joining us for CBN Newswatch. I'm Ephraim Graham. California's historic wildfires last fall set the stage for a deadly disaster this week. Mudslides. Authorities say at least 13 are dead and rescuers are still searching right now for the missing. Authorities in California are still looking for survivors. They're expanding their search today, hoping to find people in damaged homes and buildings that so far they haven't been able to reach. Our people are out there trying to do the best work they can and perform as many rescues as they possibly can. Rescuers are climbing on rooftops, using search dogs, and even taking to the air in hopes of finding those who can't get out. One of those rescued on Tuesday, a 14-year-old girl trapped for hours. Some people are even going out on their own searching for loved ones. It's my mom and I'm fighting with all my heart to find her. Authorities had braced for something like this after historic wildfires last fall stripped hills of vegetation. This week, with nothing to hold the soil in place, a hard-hitting rain unleashed deadly torrents of mud. Three in the morning, early morning hours, all the debris just came down. It sounded like cars were being dragged. You know, we saw the boulders, the rocks. I tried, tried to get out and couldn't. I uh, woke up my wife and we just did not know what to do because we were just surrounded by uh, mud. In Santa Barbara County, thousands called for rescue between 3 and 6 a.m. Tuesday morning. Daylight revealed scenes that the sheriff described as looking like a World War I battlefield. The fast-moving mud worked like wet concrete and destroyed everything in its path. In Burbank, a debris basin partially collapsed. On many properties, the mud now reaches up to the roof lines. At this home, a river of sludge blew out doors, windows, and the garage door. And at this one, only the chimney is left. The rest of the house swept away. Elsewhere, intersections overrun with flood water. What hasn't helped, residents who ignored mandatory evacuation warnings in Santa Barbara County. Less than 15 percent of the people got out. About two dozen people are still unaccounted for. Rescuers hope they can find them today. Heather Sell, CBN News. The U.S. Department of Justice says a judge's ruling protecting the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program known as DACA does not change the fact the program is illegal. The judge ordered the government to accept renewal applications from current DACA members. Justice spokesman Devin O'Malley said the program was an unlawful circumvention of Congress by the Obama administration. The battle continues in the courts and in Congress. O'Malley says the federal government is aiming to enforce the rule of law and wind down the program. It should be a bill of love and we can do that. But it also has to be a bill where we're able to secure our border. Now that the North, North Korea plans to send athletes to the Winter Olympics in Seoul, could it affect how the United States deals with the regime? While it appears like a good first step, CBN national security correspondent Eric Rosales found experts aren't understanding the motives of dictator Kim Jong-un. For the first time in eight years, North Korea has agreed to send its athletes to the Olympics. For the upcoming Winter Games, a figure skating pair and possibly more will be sent to represent the country. During a meeting between both sides, South Korean leaders talked of entering the Olympics opening ceremony side by side with the North. While the North Koreans call it a New Year's gift, the South sees it as reassurance the games will not be disrupted. During the meeting, the South tried to bring up denuclearization, but received no response from their northern counterparts. Some see the North's Olympic participation as nothing more than a ploy. We have to remember, on November 28th, they tested their latest ICBM, or long-range missile. Well, from what we've been able to gather, Kim hasn't been able to completely finish off that missile. He needs heat shield technology, essentially ability to have a warhead that can go through the atmosphere and hit something like a city. He's probably going to need a few more months to finish that off. Harry Kazianis of the Center for National Interest says this latest move by the North has caused some division in the Trump administration. It's been reported Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and Defense Secretary James Mattis want a peaceful solution, while well, National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster is pushing for a bloody nose attack.
The North Korean economy is the size of Vermont. It is a tiny little economy that we can essentially put a Python strategy on. We can strangulate them. As long as other countries like China and others are willing to help us, we can do that. Security experts say North Korea could use the games to gather intelligence by placing double agents into crowded events. In a joint statement, North and South Korea has also agreed to hold talks to relieve military tensions, pledging to resolve national problems on their own. The Trump administration welcomes these talks. The next steps would be a denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula is our number one priority and certainly what we would like to see. Uh, we are in very close contacts with the South, our South Korean allies about uh, these conversations. And don't expect our defenses to back down. We're always ready to act if we need be. Secretary Mattis told CBN News the U.S.-South Korean military exercises will resume following the Winter and Paralympic Games, which will end March 18th. Eric Rosales, CBN News, Washington. Former White House strategist Steve Bannon's critical remarks of President Donald Trump's administration appear to be costing him. The conservative Breitbart News Network announced yesterday Bannon is stepping down as chairman. He's also losing his daily talk show on the satellite radio network Sirius XM. Bannon sought to make amends in a statement on Sunday, but a White House spokesperson said it did not change his standing with the president. A second Republican lawmaker has committed suicide after being accused of sexual assault. Brandon Hickson's death comes a month after Kentucky law, the Kentucky lawmaker and Pastor Dan Johnson killed himself over allegations of sexual assault. Hickson died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head Tuesday morning. The former Idaho state lawmaker stepped down from office in October after a criminal investigation began into the matter. According to the Idaho statesman, uh, charges were never brought against Hickson because the alleged victim was not able to provide enough details. Sexual trafficking is a multi-billion dollar criminal industry where humans prey on other humans, most often women and children. The world is slowly waking up to this modern day slavery and seeking ways to fight it. One clothing company in the United Kingdom is working to help bring those victims from darkness to light. And as Caitlin Burke shows us, they're doing it one stitch at a time. Sonagachi is the largest sex district in Kolkata, India. Each day, more than 10,000 women stand in line to sell their bodies. Some enter the world of human trafficking so their families can eat, or because poverty has left them with no other option. These images and stories changed the lives of volunteers Lady Natasha Rufus Isaacs and Lavinia Brennan back in 2009. A lot of the local slum, slum girls would come to this really small production unit in the afternoons, but that was so that, you know, they wouldn't be abused in the afternoon by the men sort of in, in their village. We were teaching them how to kind of sew and, and taught them very basic skills. Um, so it was from there that we had the idea then to set up the business. We both, we, we love fashion, we love dresses, we love dressing up. And sort of working in the production unit in the afternoons, we realised that actually it would be amazing to help teach women skills so that then, you know, would make them employable or to help them live a sort of sustainable alternative livelihood. Um, and I think as two girls, we thought, <laughs> let's go into fashion. And that they did, starting an ethical fashion label that's making a worldwide name for itself, thanks in part to one major high-profile customer, Kate Middleton, Duchess of Cambridge. Beulah London customers come in looking for an outfit that will make them look and feel beautiful. They leave with a purchase that's making a difference. When we sort of first started the company, um, the vision was to have the women involved in the whole of the production. But as we sort of grow, we realized that, that wasn't quite possible given their skill set. Um, and if you can imagine, the average age of a girl being trafficked is 13. So there's a lot of healing that has to go on before she can sort of go into employment. Um, so we decided to start small, um, partner up with, with co companies or businesses that were working on the ground with women who've been trafficked. Um, so like Freeset. The organization known as Freeset works to help Indian women escape the sex trade. They not only teach useful skills, but empowerment as well. 
খুবই কষ্ট ছিল যখন লাইনে ছিলাম দিনে পর দিন খেতে পাইনি না খেয়ে খেয়ে থেকেছি এখন বাবার আশেপাশে সুখ দিয়েছে সুখ হয়েছে আমি লাইন ছেড়ে দিয়েছি আমি মুক্তি পেয়েছি আমি সবকে বলতে পারবো যে আমার না আমি খুব আমার জীবন খুব ভালো আমার সুস্থ জীবন আমি ভালোভাবে মুক্তি পেয়েছি আমি সমাজের সঙ্গে মিশতে পেরেছি Rufus Isaacs and Brennan partner with Freeset. Customers can purchase Beulah canvas bags, which are produced directly by former trafficking victims. They've also started the Beulah Trust, which provides money for women to learn skills like embroidery. From next season as well, we'll have the embroidery that we want to have on every single piece. So then every single piece has a story in a way and has had like the hand of the woman make, make and embroider. The embroidery will be the Beulah logo, two bees in the shape of a butterfly. The butterfly effect, so the idea of, of one small um, one small thing having a large effect, or one small change having a large effect elsewhere. And I suppose that also relates back to Beulah and what Beulah stands for in the Bible. is talks about coming out of a place of darkness into freedom. So the concept of the butterfly becoming something beautiful out of darkness. So. The women who originally inspired these beautiful dresses continue to be at the heart of every design. Every theme also relates slightly to the charity side. Last season's design was kintsugi, a type of Japanese pottery. It's the concept of um, a piece of pottery being broken and then put back together with gold kind of liqueur. So the idea that the piece is more beautiful for having been broken. Mm. So we had kind of, within the collection, we had these like beautiful kind of um, prints with this like gold crack in it. One day, each Beulah London piece will carry the touch of a woman they're working to save. Until then, you can be sure that every purchase still makes a difference. If someone buys into the brand, then obviously that's helping us as a brand grow. And that's when we really feel like we can have a big impact. It's a company with a cause, and they're creating a beautiful change, one stitch at a time. Caitlin Burke, CBN News, London. Still ahead, Lipitor is one of the most prescribed drugs in America, but should it be? We're breaking down the pros and cons of statins when we return. There's a good chance you or someone you know takes a drug to lower your cholesterol. The drugs are called statins and they're widely prescribed, but a growing number of doctors and patients have serious concerns about them. Lori Johnson shows us why. David Venables blames statins for ruining his life and killing his dream of a retirement filled with travel. He says taking the drug caused such severe walking and breathing problems, he's basically homebound. Yeah, I have a disease that, is, that apparently is not going to get better, and it's progressive. I took the, the statin drug, it triggered something. Although David felt great, his doctor prescribed a statin because he felt David's LDL, or bad cholesterol, was too high. The, the first sign I had a problem, I woke up screaming. Statin side effects include memory loss, confusion, and muscle weakness, which often go away when the patient stops taking the drug. Some statin users, however, say their problems are permanent. There's a whole industry saying it's not from the statin drug. My doctor said, you have a systemic disease, the cardiologist who pushed this on me, you have a systemic disease. I said, he said, but it's not from the statin drug. I said, well, what's it from? He said, I don't know. David is one of thousands on the web and social media reporting devastating, even fatal reactions after taking a statin to little avail. You can't prove it, uh, you can't disprove it, and no one will make money from studying it. Cleveland Clinic cardiologist Leslie Cho worries stories like this might discourage overall statin use. And so for us to say things like, oh, I think people are taking too much statin therapy, and for your viewers who desperately need cholesterol-lowering medicine because they had heart attack or stroke to then take themselves off would be a horrendous disservice. She goes further, saying not only should patients stick with the drug, but that more should take it. There's great evidence that if you have low cholesterol, you live longer, have less heart attack, less dementia, less stroke.
And these cholesterol-lowering medicines have been studied in over 1 million people. Penicillin was approved based on 40 patients. While proponents of cholesterol-lowering statins say medical evidence proves the drugs save lives, there are others within the medical community who say that research is deeply flawed. In his book, Overdosed America, Harvard's Dr. John Abramson claims drug companies pay for the studies. When the drug companies undertake research, their primary goal is to produce what's taken for knowledge that will increase their drug sales. He says that control allows companies to keep the raw data secret and release only what makes their product look good. There are significant differences between what's published in even the best journals and the data that exists in a primary form that you can only get access to in litigation. It's corporate secrets. In short, he says doctors are being scammed. They're looking at the story that's told by the drug companies, unverified, thinking that that's the real evidence. Abramson recommends independent experts analyze all of the research before publishing the results to fix this problem. He also suggests that studies compare the results of taking the drug versus lifestyle changes. Exercising routinely, not smoking, addressing the stress in your life, eating a healthy diet. That's probably about four times more important than the conversation about statins. Abramson adds statistics show out of 83 users, statins prevent only one cardiovascular death and one non-fatal cardiovascular event out of 23 users. I think we lower too much. I think we lower cholesterol too much. When it comes to heart disease, cardiologist Patrick Fratellone and other doctors want the focus moved from cholesterol to high triglycerides, a blood test often overlooked. So when you eat a diet that is full of simple sugar, simple breads, pastas, high sugar fruits, your triglycerides go up. When triglycerides go up, good cholesterol, or HDL, goes down. But both can be improved simultaneously. So I usually put people on a um, low carbohydrate lifestyle moderate uh, fat, good fat from avocados, nuts and seeds, lean protein, but I also put them on oils because omega-3 decreases the uh, triglycerides. There is one supplement that decreases triglycerides called niacin. Fred alone says raising HDL strengthens the heart and immune system. He recommends HDL levels around 50 and triglycerides at around 150. So while most doctors agree statins are helpful for some patients, with all these questions, you should feel free to talk to your doctor about whether one is right for you. Lori Johnson, CBN News. A popular American sport is growing among Chinese young people, and a British skateboarder moved to China to train them to do just that. Meng Fai Li has more. Skateboarding is the hottest trend in China. In many Chinese cities, millennials get together on weekends to practice and perform skateboarding dance. It has drawn attention from an overseas expert too. James Tyson was born and raised in the United Kingdom. From a young age, he was passionate about skateboarding. It gave him identity and purpose in life. While I was young, I didn't want to do anything except skateboarding. I wanted to get better. Even though I was in school, I couldn't concentrate on my studies. My mind was full of skateboarding. I felt the same sense of freedom and open expression. Born into a Christian family, James found skateboarding was more satisfying than religion. The temptations were around me. I tried to leave after a while, but the next day, I couldn't resist the peer pressure. I was part of the group. We were the cool people. Although James experienced some challenges, he believed he could use the sport to escape all his problems. However, he did not realize he needed in his life more than just skateboarding. I was injured so bad from one accident. 
my back pain was unbearable. I started to feel lonely and hopeless. I thought my life was a joke. In the midst of his misery, a friend came to visit James and shared how God had called her to overseas mission work. James was deeply touched and decided to quit all his bad habits. He packed up his belongings and decided to do the same. James moved to Nanning, where he's now lived for more than 13 years. James and his family started a skateboard ministry. And with other Christians, he teaches young Chinese how to win the skateboarding contests. More importantly, they bring the Chinese youth to Christ. I love these Chinese youths. They are very talented. I want to train them to become better. And I don't want them to repeat the mistakes that I made in my life. Only God could provide the true freedom. James' best friend, Super Joe, came to Christ through the ministry. He now designed skateboards with biblical images. After witnessing James' godly behavior, I knew God could change me too. I accepted Jesus to protect me from evil. We need to live with purity and true freedom. More people have joined James and his team. Most of them are Chinese millennials. Joe and James are the leaders of their Bible study. Over the years, they have baptized several young Chinese. Skateboarding will be the next hottest game among the young people from around the world. I would like to invite more people to join us. My team and I could sharpen their skills. More importantly, they need to know following God is the coolest thing we can all do in life. Meng Fei Li, CBN News. And we leave you with this word today. It is a great day to live with anticipation that God is about to do his greatest work in you. With that word, be sure to make this a wonderful Wednesday. That is going to do it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.